and welcome to today's webinar entitled Do You Need More Plant 3D Piping Supports? This webinar is being brought to you by Live Lab Learning, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Academic Corp, uh, a part of Applied Software, and Live Lab is created to provide world-class training. My name is Trevor Fite, uh, and I'm very delighted to be your monitor moderator today. Uh, throughout the presentation, we're going to encourage you to interact with us by typing in questions and comments using the questions pane inside of the GoToMeeting tab. We will be answering those questions at the end of the presentation, so please withhold your questions until then. Next slide. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available to you online on our YouTube channel and for all of you who are attending today, you will receive an email with a link to this specific webcast. If you would, if you haven't already, please do visit our LiveLabLearning.com website. Uh, we are on Facebook and like our page uh, on Facebook to receive the latest information and special offers. When you visit the LiveLabLearning.com website, there is a complete list and schedule of upcoming training and webinars. We do have some upcoming events I'd like you to take note of. We have a NASTRAN Lunch and Learn. This is a live event in Huntsville, Alabama in September on the 15th. And in October, we are going to be at the Southern Automotive Conference in Nashville. Come see us in booth 120. As far as webinars go, we have a number of them upcoming. You can see the complete list here. Um, so please do contact me if you want more information on those. Uh, you should be receiving an email for these webinars, but my contact information is at the bottom, and I'd be more than happy to help you out with getting registered for those webinars. So with that, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Scott Hallmark. Scott is uh, one of our senior consultants here at Applied Software. Uh, and he will be uh, providing you the technical content today. And with that, I'll kick it off to you, Scott. Okay, great. Thanks, Trevor. Um, so the, uh, the title of this uh, particular webinar is Do You Need More Plant 3D Piping Supports? Um, there is, uh, as you know, if, if you're plant users, um, which uh, hopefully most of you are, uh, there, is, there is a set of supports that are available to you. Uh, that are out of the box. Uh, some work uh, very well. Some some have some limited capability of being able to adjust them and move them um, and, and basically have some parametric features to them that, that you would like to have. Um, but there are uh, there is a way to get those in there. And uh, as a as a service of applied software, we can do that. Uh, we can generate those types of uh, supports. We have. Um, uh, a few clients now that we've done this for already and so what I want to start with is basically showing you how you currently place some auxiliary steel supports uh, this is going to be something that uh, if you've used plant for any any length of time uh, and you've had to draw these in you're going to be familiar with this process some of you have, may have already drawn some in and have created them as blocks so that you can reuse them but there's still that uh, non-intelligent component until you convert it so what's what's being done now? If you're just having to generate something like a, a knee brace or or some type of um, um, some type of trapeze, you're going to be building that uh, basically stick building using construction geometry and using structural shapes from the structural tab of the plant 3D ribbon. Um, and so what we what you would typically do is draw those construction lines in. You need a line there at 45 degrees. You need some members thrown in there, some W shapes, angles. Draw those members in based on that construction geometry. And then you have to manipulate it some. You may have to move it in to get it in the right position. But then once you do that, you've got some cleaning up to do. You've got to trim some of the uh, members uh, and add miters or, or lengthen the, mem uh, the member sizes uh, in order to make it look right. Uh, to aesthetically look right uh, in the model. Uh, and all that takes time. It's a lot of clicks, a lot of picks. And uh, so what, what we can do as a service from Applied is provide uh, code in order to alleviate some of that. Once you have, again, going back to what you currently do, 
uh, once you have that in place or have that uh, modeled, then you have to just kind of move that support into its location if you didn't do that originally with the stick building geometry um, and start placing those, uh, you know, placing it using point filters and O snaps and things like that in order to get it into the right position. Once it's in the right position, then you have to convert it and you have to convert it to the intelligent piping support, which is an option from your ribbon, but it's, again, it's an extra step. Um, so once it's all in place and it's converted, then it can show up in your isometrics, your bill of materials, you can call it out on your, on your orthos, everything's great. But what if you have to go back and change it? Uh, what you'd lose is that flexibility or being able to adjust the support if the pipe moves. If, if I was to take that pipe there that you're looking at that that knee brace is on top of um, or the knee brace is underneath, if I was to move that horizontally away from the column, that green column you're seeing there, well, I would have to basically redo that support. I, I could explode it. I could modify it by stretching uh, and then reconverting it back to an intelligent piping support. Um, all of which takes more and more time. So that's how you currently place auxiliary steel supports. Now this is how you could be placing auxiliary steel supports um, using utilizing the service that we provide uh, at Applied. And that's uh, to generate this code inside of Python uh, allowing you to basically have that component sitting in your tool palette ready to go. Uh, you simply pick the, tool, the uh, support from the tool palette pick the location on the pipe that it needs to go, the component shows up, uh, and then you're, you're ready to start manipulating that. Um, now when we generate these, uh, these, uh, this code for these 3D objects, uh, for these supports, uh, we can add in whatever uh, stretching capabilities, manipulating capabilities you want, making it adjustable by using these grips. So for me to take this knee brace and move it back to the column so I know it's, it can be welded to the column or, or bolted in some way, then I can use uh, you know, this, this grip that I'm pointing to here. Uh, if I want to stretch out the knee brace, maybe it needs to be longer to accommodate more pipe um, or, or more uh, horizontal rows of pipe, uh, then I can just stretch that out, readjust, uh, and, and, and add that in. Uh, if I need to, say, put this a shoe underneath this pipe um, and let it rest on the knee brace. Well, I've got another grip here that I can select to drop it down four inches, put in my four inch knee brace, a uh, four inch uh, shoe on top of the knee brace, and it's all interconnected to the pipe. It all knows that it's a part of the pipe it's, and it's going to show up in your ISOs and your orthos uh, and your bill of materials as that support. So. Even after it's placed, I can go back and modify it. If I was to move that horizontally, again, um, it's, it's all adjustable, um, and I don't have to do any exploding and reconverting. Uh, again, um, you make adjustments through the grips. You can also make adjustments through various parameters that, that you, can, you can define. You can tell us what parameters you want to be able to change, what things you want to be able to move on, on a particular support, and we can add that in so it shows up in your properties dialog box. So we can define maybe even uh, the size of the member. Doesn't You want it to be a 4, a 6, 8, or a 10 inch. Um, we can define those values in here. We can define the, the offset dimension, we can def and here you're seeing the overall length. Uh, this B dimension here is the overall length from uh, end to end of the support. So you're able to get some of that feedback, some of those dimensional values by doing this. And we all do this, we, we do this all through what's, like I said, what's called Python code, uh, Python scripting. And so we write this code based on what you need to have show up and what you need to be adjustable. So this is just a quick snippet of a very simple um, simple code that we were doing that, that helped define the, the W shape. Um, and connect the, the parts together and then being able to locate it with grips is what you're seeing there. So then we take that code and we port that into the catalog uh, and, and there's a process for that and it's something that we're very familiar with. Um, so we port that into the catalog so you can have a, a custom supports catalog that, uh, that only is, that's, that's your catalog. 
uh, no one else has it. Um, and so that catalog can then be, uh, those items can be manipulated. Uh, we can add to the values, uh, add to the sizes of pipe that it can fit on. So maybe certain types of supports can only work with certain size pipe. We can define that here within the catalog. We can uh, and then plug in various dimensional values, all being very parametric um, and uh, and easy to use. So and we can do that not just with auxiliary steel, but we can do this with hangers, clamps. Uh, as mentioned before, we've we've got a, a few customers already that we've done this for um, uh, as a service, and uh, they seem to be very pleased with what they've what they've received. So some of the things that, that we've done in the past, some of the things that, that uh, could be available uh, to you for us for us to do for you custom uh, would be some things like T-poles, um, you know, with various um, shapes, uh, with using pipe or W shapes or angle. Uh, we can do beam supports under beams uh, and that, that connect into columns or trapeze. We can do inverted knee braces or regular knee braces. Again, we can do trapeze. We can do trapeze with angle or, or any any structural shape really that you desire, uh, including unistrut and hilti. Uh, we can add those in there as well. Um, add those options for you to be able to place uh, trapeze using those tools or using that those members. Um, hangers. We can define different types of hangers. This particular one that you're seeing on the left is uh, that's a, a depiction of a scissor clamp it doesn't actually have the exact shape of a scissor clamp but it gets the point across it takes the uh, it takes the shape uh, and the and the size parameters into consideration so that you can still do uh, your interference checks um, for that uh, and then you got you know hex clamps riser clamps rods high pressure uh, clamps you got hex with PVC sleeves and grommets uh, you've also got tank legs uh, that we can define uh, this is something that's not really a quote-unquote piping support, but we've added it to the support uh, tablet or, or um, tool palette so that you can add those in uh, to tanks. I don't know if you're having to stick build those now. More than likely you are, but I'm going to show you a little bit later how to place those in um, using uh, you know, the code that we could provide to you uh, as a service. Uh, and then, of course, tank handrail getting round handrail onto um, onto a tank or, or to wrap it around a, a tank on concrete as a as a barrier uh, as a protection uh, we can we can do that and we can show you how we do that as well so we're going to jump into the demonstration portion of this real quick and uh, just show you how these work again uh, what we would do is from applied software standpoint is we would um, evaluate what what your needs are, what type of supports you would like to use, um, and then give you an estimate of the amount of time it would take for us to to generate that code to your specifications, um, and then provide that code to you in, in a catalog format as well as the native format of the uh, of the code. Um, and then we can also help assist get those into into your support catalogs uh, or support um, specs from the catalogs. But we'll just start with a few things here uh, in this uh, corner down here. I, you know, there's there's some out of the box supports that you can use uh, stanchions. Uh, but where where I was before, we found a need to have more uh, more options for that. We wanted to see uh, angled T poles. We wanted to see pipe T poles. We wanted to see W shaped T poles. Um, so that's one of the things that we generated. Uh, was we were able to generate these uh, based on um, uh, the the size of the pipe, uh, the distance down. So you can see as as we place this one, there's many more options than we had with the out of the box support, uh, which was basically telling it how far down to go until it hits the uh, until it hits the ground. Uh, you can see here it also includes grout. Uh, so uh, that's a property option here. If I wanted to go in and remove that grout out of there, uh, that's just something that I added in that that I thought would be a, a good option to have uh, is to have one inch of grout, two inches of grout, um, or or zero. We could put in zero for no grout at all, and it would take it out completely. Uh, being able to adjust this is also beneficial. Uh, if I want to change that length there to 18 inches, 
Well, you can see it moves it off, but then I'll just stretch this one back over another 18 so that it's back underneath the pipe. Uh, we're not quite underneath the pipe. Let's go 24 on that. And so we're underneath the pipe, but then I want to get this centered back under it again. Uh, so we'll move that to, um, to 9 inches, and we're almost centered up. I guess I'll have to do 12 inches there. All right, so that centers it back up underneath the pipe. But also, uh, that's coming in at a, at a particular size uh, angle. And maybe this pipe is going to require more than what I've specified there. So maybe two inches is not going to be enough. I need to go up to a three-inch angle or maybe even um, a four-inch angle. You can see everything adjusts automatically. Um, and, and let's just be able to manipulate that, move it around. Um, and there's also a, an insertion point. So even though we have this T-pole here, if I want to put some type of clamp on it, like the, the out-of-the-box clamp or bracket, I can simply select that, let it find the node of the existing uh, T-pole, which is found, found right there, and that places that right in the center of the angle. So we, we define these, um, these objects so that insertion points work with other supports. That's very important that we do it that way. Um, so that's just that's just one of the uh, T-poles. I'll, I'll go ahead and place a couple of others uh, and not necessarily talk through those, uh, just so you can see the uh, different shapes that we have for those. Uh, we have the adjustable pipe stanchion. This one actually is set to where we have a different clamp on it, but I can just adjust that so it's back up to the top. Um, and then we have the scroll down a little bit more. I'll find the other. There's the angle T pole. No, not that one. Uh, I've got quite a few in here, as you can see. I just have to find where my T poles are. There we go. So there's our uh, T-pole on concrete. <clears throat> so this one is utilizing a uh, W-shape for that one. And then we have one, another one here that's utilizing a pipe. So again, it's just a matter of picking and clicking. They all have basically have the same adjustment options to, to move them into position. Once they're in place, if I have to manipulate the pipe, move something around, or, or just move it to another location. I can take it and grab it and move it to another location on the pipe. It's very simple to, to move around. It's just another component at that point. But we're not having to do the conversion or reconversion of anything. All right, we'll move up here to the top. And uh, again, I could go through the process uh, and show you what you typically do now, but I think you're doing that enough already. Uh, let me show you what it looks like if we're just placing a knee brace from, uh, from the tool palette. So we have knee braces here. Uh, this is a W-shaped knee brace. So you can see how it, uh, how it kind of runs into the column back there. And that's good because I want to show you how it automatically adjusts just by moving, it, um, moving the grips. So here we've got this one in place. If you look around, you can see it's actually going through. So all we do is select it, pick it, and grab it back to the edge of the, of the uh, column. That's automatically adjusted now. But Maybe before doing that, we wanted to lengthen this out because we want to add more uh, another pipe to this particular knee brace. Well, we can just drag that out, maybe uh, 18 inches. I'll take this arrow back and just drag it back to the column again, automatically adjusting uh, that support. Not having to explode it, not having to re um, um, set it back up as a, as a piping support again or redraw it. Uh, maybe we want to put a shoe underneath this. Well, I can just take this offset, drop it down four inches, and then go find a shoe from from the standard um, standard shoes that we have in in uh, Plant 3D. Again, I'm going to look for that node. You can see how it automatically finds the node of the existing support. So it's already set to a four inch depth, 12 inches long, and those two items will show up on this isometric uh, in the bill of material as a support for that. Well, maybe we want this inverted uh, as well. 
uh, I want to invert uh, that and, and maybe hang it, uh, use a hanger for that. So I'll take a, I'll go back up here and find my knee brace again, but this time I'm going to use a, um, an angle knee brace. I'll pick it again. Actually, let's go find the inverted. Here it is here. So I'll find the, the pipe and where I want it to, uh, to be located. So I'll locate it here. And so you can see how it's, it's running into the top now, but again, we've got grips to automatically adjust this. So I can change that. It comes in as a default two, in, uh, two foot. I'll change this to 18 inches to drop it down a little bit closer. Uh, we'll take this arrow here, drag it back to the edge so that it's automatically to the uh, face of the column. Uh, and then if I want to place in um, a, um, a clamp, I can go find, and I'll use one of the, uh, one of the ones that I've generated here. Uh, we'll use uh, adjustable insulated pipe clevis hanger. And we'll find that node again. By finding the node, it's going to line it up exactly where I need it on that support. And so all I have to do is select the support, grab it, come down and find the existing uh, point on the, uh, on the custom support, inverted knee brace. And so that is a completed support for that. Again, hopefully you're seeing the time savings that can be uh, utilized by using uh, some of this code that we can supply to you as a service of applied software. Um, let's look at a couple more here. We'll follow this line on up a little bit higher. Uh, there's there's some pretty interesting uh, supports that, that we've generated in the past. Uh, one of these is this uh, riser clamp with rods. And so we can define the uh, the location for this. We can we can um, Adjust the height of this so that it matches up again to the bottom of the um, bottom of the steel. Uh, but there's also, uh, again, we, we want to make these flexible for you so that you have the options to change what you need to change. Uh, so instead of two feet in in width there, maybe we want this to be 18 inches. Well, we can adjust that, um, or maybe it needs to be longer, further apart, and we can go 30 inches. Uh, maybe the uh, the spacing in between, that's the S dimension there, or maybe that needs to be two inches instead of an inch and a half. You can see the spacing adjust uh, in between. And the rod diameter, maybe you need a inch and a half rod diameter. Well, we can adjust that as well uh, and everything adjust with it. Uh, so again, the properties, the parameters we assign based on your needs, your your specific uh, um, request, we can, uh, we can put into the code. Um, so let's move on over here. Let's do a couple of the um, of the uh, trapeze. So I'll just place a standard. We'll we'll use the Unistrut trapeze under beam. And so what I'll do is pick the location for this. Again, you've you've got your dynamic input to locate these supports based on various you know dimensions off of off of um, off of elbows or dimensions off of the end of pipe or something like that. Whatever it is that uh, that you need to dimension from. Uh, so if I wanted to dimension that, you know, four foot off the uh, center of pipe or the back end, that can locate that support exactly in that position. Then we can take this, and this is what's unique about being able to generate these types of supports uh, through Python is being, having this flexibility. If you've used any of the trapeze uh, out of the box, you'll notice that there you can't widen them. Um, you're kind of just stuck with what you get. Uh, in this case, though, all we do is we pick the grip and move it to a midpoint of a column. It's going to adjust. I can take this one, move it to the midpoint of the other column, and then I just need to adjust the height of those. And again, all I need to do is pick the bottom of any column or any beam, horizontal beam, and it's going to adjust to fit uh, where I need it. Maybe we want to put more than one pipe on this particular uh, trapeze. Well, again, I can take I can take that that arrow. Yeah, it got away from me there. Uh, I can take that arrow, uh, that adjusting grip, and I'll just move it to the next available uh, next available column. 
So we'll move it over to there. So now that's on midpoint uh, for that for that beam, and so I could run additional pipes along there. Um, so let's go in and add a, uh, something else in here. We'll roll around to the other side. I just I wanted to show you uh, some of the ones that are kind of difficult to, to draw um, just on your own. Uh, that, that takes a lot of stick building and, um, and construction lines. But we've got one right here uh, where I've actually got two pipes that are, that are on the same elevation and an additional pipe. I'd like to build one support that supports all three of those. Well, we've got a tiered trapeze under beam. Um, and so I'll just pick the pipe that I want to actually attach it to. And then we'll uh, we'll find we'll locate it. You can see across the top there where the top of that support is running into the steel. That's a good indicator of where it is and where I'd want to where I'd want to uh, locate it. So I'll just pick that location, or I could use dimensional values. Either one. Um, I'll go ahead and adjust this down so that it is to the bottom of the steel, and adjust this over to the column. Now, it does run into uh, a pipe down here and it, it's not quite far enough out on this side, so I'm going to adjust it. We'll take this and move this out um, another um, 30 inches, so that accounts to, uh, to hold this pipe, but this one down here, I need to drop this one down below, and so what I'll do is I'll just drop it to a quadrant of the existing pipe. And so you can see how easy it is to place these supports in using this Python code. Um, all right, and so last thing we'll look at um, as far as supports are concerned is hangers. I'll just show a couple of different hangers. Uh, I've got some pipes here that um, that I want to I want to attach to to the horizontal beams above it. So I'll go find a couple of the uh, couple of the supports I've created, the hangers I've, I've created for. Uh, through plant and um, let's see where they're at up here. I think they're at the top. They are at the top. All right, so we'll use this uh, scissor. So you can see as I start to place this, how it's uh, it's it's not really attaching to the beam. Uh, it's not really the right size for the um, for the pipe. But as I place it, you'll see that it automatically adjusts, and that's by it reading the catalog information. Um, and so we can take that now, take that support, and just use the grips to to get it on the right position. So we'll drop it to the bottom of the of the um, of the beam, move this to the top of the uh, of the flange, and then move this out to the edge of the flange. Oops, that one went a little too far. Let's move this out. I grabbed the wrong edge to the edge of the flange there. So that fits right around that um, as a scissor clamp. So that would be the uh, depiction for a scissor clamp. And I'll just drop one of these other ones in here that we have as well. Um, and we'll just use this um, hex clamp um, being with two. Now this one's going to come in upside down, but we're just going to roll it around using uh, the grip. So this could be welded down or it could be rolled to the top and then adjusted to match uh, to hit the uh, hit the material, uh, hit the, uh, the horizontal beam. So that's that's placing um, the supports. Now the other thing that you can do inside of uh, or that we can provide in, inside of Python is, um, is some tank supports and uh, handrail. So I've got some of those here, as well as tank support lugs. I'm going to show you that one too. I'm going to take this uh, tank support legs, and really all I'm looking for at this point is the center of the torsphere head, and so it places that in, and then I can I can determine what direction this needs to go in. I'm going to have it go at 45 degrees so that my it doesn't my leg doesn't run through that pipe that's coming out at 90. Right. So I'll adjust this. I'll take one of my grips. And just drag it down to my concrete, and then I'll adjust the, the the width of this, adjust the size of it. 
and so what I'm looking for is this other grip down here. I know that this is a six foot diameter tank, so I want this to be just inside that, so I'll do a uh, five foot, uh, five foot nine, and so we'll see that this fits just underneath uh, the tank. Well, you could actually run that out to get the exact diameter if you wanted to, so it's flush, but uh, that's a quick way to generate those legs. Again, those have options as well. Uh, so if I come down and look at the options, I can change that to a 6. Uh, I'm not sure if I went up to an 8. Yeah, it looks like I did go to an 8 for that as well. Uh, so the base plates, the member sizes, they all update uh, at the same time. Uh, tank handrail, we can place that in. Again, we're looking for the center of a, um, of a horizontal, of the uh, torsphere head. And we'll just pull the location for that or the direction. And then we just use crypt for that as well. So again, this is a six foot tank. I'm going to make this five foot eight for the handrail. So you can see how the handrail just fits right down into the side of the tank. If you wanted it to actually fit on the outside, we can make that work also. Uh, this has a, a, a height uh, value as well that we can manipulate. So uh, we can make this three foot six instead of four foot. Now this tank uh, is actually going through the concrete um, and so I don't want to support this underneath, I want to support it with tank lugs. So uh, we're going we're gonna to select uh, tank support uh, lugs. And so you can see those are, are out there on my cursor now. So again, I'm just finding the, the center of the top torospheric head, place it in, pull the direction. One of these is going to have all my grips on it, so it's just a matter of picking the grip and then defining the size. So we'll do, uh, this is 5 foot 8 for this one, um, and then we'll tell this how far down it needs to go. So we'll use this grip here and tell it to go down to the concrete, and that will adjust it to fit right on the concrete. There's other options in there as well to, uh, to manipulate how this looks, just because... Uh, that's a, a good thing to have. You may not, they may not all be the same size every time. So maybe it's 18 inches wide, um, and the 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 distance out is uh, 12 inches. So we can have uh, lugs that look like this. Let me back up a little bit. Go back to the. Uh, to this one here. Uh, we can adjust this height as well. So right now it's set to three. We can update this to six. You can see it's just cutting off um, less of, um, of that corner. And then we can move it out to uh, 12. We can adjust the height of this up to, let's just do 12 with that also, and then change the width back to 18 again. So we can make these look exactly the way we want them to look. Again, when I'm done with that, I can go back to the to the tank and add the uh, the handrail again to the uh, center of the torsphere head. So we'll pull a direction. Now hopefully you're seeing the uh, the time savings in this. I'll do five foot eight on that one also. So you can see that one doesn't quite go uh, all the way into the tank, but we can adjust that so that it does. Uh, or maybe we don't want that there, we actually want one that is surrounding the tank. So what we'll do is we'll find that insertion point, place that there, and then we can adjust that size um, as well. So we'll make this 8 foot. Alright, so with that, that's um, that's really all I had to show you today. I wanted to show you what we can do for you uh, as a service of applied software, generating supports uh, based on your needs, uh, your specifications, uh, how you would want it to look, creating the uh, creating the Python code scripting, um, creating the uh, creating the objects in the catalogs, creating your own custom catalog, uh, and then taking that catalog and helping you get those into your current projects uh, piping support specs. Um, so with that I'm going to come back to our 
PowerPoint for just a second, and we'll leave this. Uh, we'll open this up to questions. I'll um, ask Trevor to come back on with us here, and uh, and we can address any questions you may have for us. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Uh, good presentation. Um, as the PowerPoint says now, uh, we're going to open the floor for questions, and we're going to monitor those, and uh, we'll take those now from you. If you would, please use the pane in your GoToMeeting uh, to ask a question, and we will see that question and respond to it. Okay, we have a question. Um, first question is, do these supports show up on stress analysis? Uh, the supports will show up on the, if you're referring to the, the PCF file that uh, the uh, ISO creates, uh, yes, the supports that are being placed, they are intelligent, um, so they are going to show up on, uh, on the stress ISO that you can generate. Um, now the, the details about that, um, the details of the support, um, you know, the, the size of the beams, that type of information, you may have to manually get that into, uh, into a stress analysis tool. I'm not sure about that. Um, it works the same way the current supports work in, in plant. Uh, it's just additional supports. Okay, and uh, Gary, if that answers your question, please reply back with a yes or a no. If not, we can get further clarification offline and uh, address your question specifically. Uh, the next question we have is how do we get the program? Now, that can be um, interpreted a couple of different ways. If you're talking about the plant 3D software, that's obviously something that you can work with our sales team on in getting the actual program itself. Um, but I think the question, and Larry, please qualify um, with another question. I think the question you're asking, though, is on the Python scripting itself. Uh, so, Scott, is Python scripting something that is naturally inside of uh, Plant 3D as a module, um, or or what? Uh, no, and uh, he and the question might be also that. Um, uh, well, let me have to answer your question first, Trevor. Uh, no, the Python scripting tool is not. Um, any of you that's been out to my blog, you'll know where to where you can go to find the the tool to to actually generate your own code. Um, uh, there's there's not a whole lot of information on how to do that. We we know how to do that, and that's why we offer this as a service. Um, but as far as that, yeah, it's it's not built in, but that's what Plant uses. Plant uses the actual PYC files or PY files that are generated from that that scripting editor. Um, as far as okay. and, and what again, I think he means, this, yeah. Oh, go go ahead, Scott. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah. As far as what I was thinking, the question was meaning was um, is whatever what I showed today is it available as a program that you can just add in and uh, no it's not uh, we we custom design these for the the user uh, to for the needs that they need um, so you know we may be able to take some existing code and and uh, and manipulate it uh, to to fit the needs of the client and that's you know cer certainly something we can talk about and address um, but uh, Typically, what what has happened in the past is uh, there's there's uh, supports that need to be placed. They're not available out of plant. Um, I get sent over a uh, PDF or paper copy of uh, of, a, of a catalog item, catalog out of like a hard copy catalog out of people who actually build supports, and they say I need this, and that's that's what we do. We build it from that, uh, write the code from that. And then test it thoroughly uh, so that it works uh, when it gets to uh, onto your machines. And again, just to follow up on, on what Scott's talking about, as a service, what we would do is we would get on a discovery call to determine what your needs are. We would scope out the engagement, uh, give you an estimate as to the amount of time and effort it would take to um, 
create the custom scripts, and then provide that as a service. Do we have any additional questions? Okay. Uh, while we're waiting for some more questions, Scott, I hate to kind of uh, throw you a curveball here, but mm -hmm. if you could, um, could you share your blog site with those who are on this call, just in case they're not already following you on your blog? Sure. Um, yeah. Let me let me add that in real quick. I'll just type it into I'll type it into the next slide, and then uh, when we go to that, I'll leave it up so they can see that. Okay. Uh, it, and the reason I'm doing that is it's kind of long. So. <laughs> okay. And I mentioned Scott's blog site because uh, some of the work that we've done for some of our clients have actually been generated from people who've seen information on Python scripting on Scott's blog site. So if you're not already following Scott on his blog, I would highly recommend that you do so. Uh, he does a lot of uh, really good work on that, that blog site and shares a lot of good information. Okay, we don't have any additional questions at this time. Uh, you can see here on this slide, though, that if you have any additional questions, if you want more information, my phone number is here. My email address is there as well. Uh, um, I'm fortunate in that most of the people who have attended this webinar uh, I've met before or I know, so uh, thank you for attending, and uh, by all means don't hesitate to reach out and send me an email for additional information about Python scripting. So let's go to the next slide, please. Okay. And there we go. <laughs> so there is uh, Scott's uh, blog site. If you would uh, take a chance, take a, take a moment, go there, give it a shot, uh, and again, we will uh, we will be having additional webinars in the future. Send me your questions down there is my email address one more time. We really do appreciate you joining us today for the webinar. We hope that you found it informative and helpful to your business, and we look forward you forward to you joining us for future webinars as well. Thanks again. Thanks.